User-defined functions, or UDFs, are custom functions in Excel that allow the end user to utilize them within their formulas inside of their Excel workbooks. With Add-in Express, you have two ways of creating UDFs. The first is through an Excel automation add-in, and the second is via what's known as an XLL add-in. Now, Excel add-ins are COM-based add-ins, and they work with Excel 2002 through 2010. And XLLs are DLLs that Excel can open directly, and they're supported with Excel 2000 through 2010. Now, a big note here is that these version numbers are what Add-in Express supports when building these two types of solutions with Add-in Express. Whichever direction you choose, you can still do things like creating custom functions that are not included with Excel, and you can do things like implement new versions of built-in functions and extend them to maybe have your own little wrinkle or tweak to it that you need for your business rules. You can also do things like connect data from your legacy systems or your line of business systems and somehow include them and integrate them into Excel via just a custom function. And you can also do things like include them in your application-specific data flows or, or workflows. With this video, I want to highlight the XLL project type and go over the main reasons as to why you would choose it over the Excel automation add-ins. You want to create an XLL project for building user-defined functions in the following situations. You want a DLL versus a COM add-in, and one of the reasons for that is speed. You need to support maybe Excel 2000, although support all the way up to 2010 is there and is available for you as well. And also the need for speed in terms of your computational power, your calculations, especially financial and complex math calculations. You want to make use of both functions and procedures, something that's not available in automation add-ins. Also, too, you might want to be able to hide a function or procedure by setting the ADXL function descriptor dot is hidden equal to true, something that you're not able to do with an automation add-in. And another nice feature is that you have access to low-level Excel features via the ADX XLL module dot call worksheet function. Again, something that's not available with automation add-ins. And if you need cell modification, that's possible with XLL add-ins. More information is obviously available in the developer guides available online at addinexpress.com. And then in regards of descriptions, it's not really important for the XLL to have a description, but you really want your functions as well as their arguments to have a description. Now, the difference here with automation add-ins is that the automation add-in can have a description, but then its functions and arguments cannot. So, or if these are the things that you need most or value most in your add-in, then an XLL add-in is the way to go. What we'll do next is I'm going to fade to black, and when I come back, I'll be in Visual Studio, and I'll walk you through the process of creating a very simple, yet somewhat handy, XLL add-in. All right, as promised, here I am in Visual Studio 2010, and we'll start out by doing the New Project button on the command bar. And then in the New Project dialog, I'll go to the other project types under the Extensibility node, and I will select the ADX XLL add-in project, which will create an isolated XLL add-in for Microsoft Excel 2000 and higher. So I'll just call this my Excel add-in. Say OK. Now in the new Microsoft Excel XLL add-in, I'm just going to select Visual Basic and I'll leave the interopt assemblies as Microsoft Office 2000 and higher. I'll click Next. And for the strong name, I'll just create Generate New, and select Finish, and the wizard will go ahead and create the project for us inside of Visual Studio 2010 and open up the XLL module.vb designer where we can begin to build our project. The XLL module designer is where we can uh, configure a lot of the key things about our XLL add-in, and one is I'm just going to click on the, on the designer and make it active, and we'll notice over here in the properties uh, the name of the designer here is XLL module, but then the add-in name, I could give this whatever name I want. It defaults to the name of the project, my XLL add-in, uh, but I could choose to name it something different if I like, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just leave it as the default, but that's there. 
and we could do things like uh, specify if we want to display the alert. So specifies if alert should be shown when the add-in is being in, uninstalled and Excel is running. I could set that to false or whatnot. Load at startup specifies if the add-in should should be loaded at the Excel startup, which we want to leave as true. But what we want to do to add our custom user-defined function is move over to the designer, and I will right-click and we will add. We'll choose the add Excel function category, which will add this ADX Excel function category one object to the designer. Now this object just specifies the function that would list inside of the insert function category uh, the dialog box that's inside of Excel, and I'll show this later when we demo it. And what we can do is go in the properties window for this object and we can specify the name of our category for which our functions that we'll define will reside. And here I'll just say these are my company functions. And now we can go to the function descriptors and I'll hit this ellipsis button and that will open up the ADX Excel function category controls collection dialog box and what this allows us to do is start to define the functions that will reside inside of this category. In this demo, we're going to add one function, and we can, we can come over here to the members where we see the My Company Functions category. I will select Add Excel Function from the, I'll right click and do the context menu here, but I also have the choice in this dialog has a toolbar, I could hit the same button there. And I now have a function description or descriptor added, and it'll allow me to uh, add a description to the function, choose a function name which is a drop down of available functions that I've for code I've actually written which I, we haven't done yet and then and then we have other properties that we can specify our desired values for. I'm going to go ahead and say OK at the moment and just leave that subbed out in blank so that we can now move over to the code window and I'll just do view code and we'll move down here to the code window where we will define our UDF. And before I actually write it, let's expand this section here. It says define your UDFs in this section, which is just a region that's been created for us by the Add and Express framework. Minimize that so we can see a bit more. And we just see that this is a container for user-defined functions, and this is where we need to put, put our functions, and we have this read-only property of underscore module, which is the XLL add-ins XLL module object. Next, if we expand the sample function, we can see uh, just a good idea of what a sample function should look like. And we see that this is a shared function. All functions or, or and procedures, they would need to be shared, public shared functions and procedures. And we see that we need to pass uh, an argument and we'll pass it as an object. And in, in this case, if it's a function, this one's a string. And it's just a good if statement that that exemplifies or illustrates how each of the different argument types that are supported can be handled inside of an arg inside of a method. So now what I want to do is I'll just go underneath this sample function and we'll create a new function. So this function is going to return just boilerplate text and, allow, and I'll use the parameter to pass what text I want. So this will be public shared function, we'll call this my company boilerplate text. And in terms of the parameter, we'll do by val, and I'll say desired text as the parameter name as an object and then we'll return a string. And what this function will do is check the type of the desired text argument. And if it's a string, then we'll do what we want. The first thing we'll do is just store the text from the past desired text. And then we'll do a select case on it. 
And here if we say my company name, if that's the past value, then what we'll return is just a hard-coded value of add and express. And if we say my street, then we'll return one, two, three, four, five main street. And if we say my address, then we'll return Dallas, Texas. 75201 and then we'll do a case else just, that's just good practice so depending on what I pass here in the desired text this is what will return as the value of my string now let's finish our if statement so if we don't if the value is is not a string then in fact, actually, let me change this right here on the case else to say return unknown text. Now let's go handle what happens if, if text is not passed. And so what we can do is say if module, if it's in the function wizard, so if the, if the function wizard is open inside of Excel, we can determine that here in code then we'll say turn the parameter must be a string otherwise what we want to do is we'll just return and add an express MSO ADX Excel error and we'll just specify um, Excel error val as as the error type and that'll do it that is the end of our function and now we can go to go back over here to the XLL module where we can where we can go back to our function category in the function descriptors and begin to configure that again. By selecting our function and now I'll go ahead and first off select our function name which is the my boilerplate text and I'll just say this inserts company boilerplate text. I'll just leave it at that. Now, for is hidden, I want to go ahead and leave it as false because I want it to show in the uh, insert function wizard. Also, too, is macro, that's fine. Is thread safe, false. And for is volatile, I could specify this to be true. And what would happen is anytime the worksheet recalculates, it would recalculate this function. But I, I want to leave that for false because we don't want it to recalculate every time. And now what I need to do is We'll come to the, I'll select the My Company Boilerplate text and then I will say Add Parameter because we need to uh, map the parameter of the function back to uh, this parameter descriptor right here. And this, this works the same way. I'll add a description here. Uh, desired Boilerplate text and then the parameter name I can select and it's already it already knows based off of the way I defined my my function and I'll say desired text and I will say OK now we have a fully functional XLL add-in so let's build the solution and then next we'll register the ADX project on my system and this will allow me to demo it I'll say OK I'll open up Excel 2010 to demo and I'll go to the formulas and do insert function from the ribbon in the select a category drop down 
I can move now to the My Company functions, which is the name of the category that I defined. And we have My Boilerplate, My Company Boilerplate Text. And we can see also to the Inserts Company Boilerplate Text. It's the description I gave it. Everything's working exactly as configured. And I'll say OK. And we can start out by saying My Company Name. And we'll see as well as full support for the insert function wizard that the formula result it already knows it's going to be add an express and we can see uh, here in the equal field add an express etc I could do say I say change it to my company names or something like that that's not supported and we see that the preview knows it's already evaluated the formula and knows it's going to be unnamed text but I'll move it back and say OK and then as well I can type in my company boilerplate text and do my street and we'll finish it off with my address and there we go perfect Granted, this was a short demo in a pretty simple scenario, but it does highlight just how easy it is to create a user-defined function with add-in express that creates an XLL add-in. It, it's really easy. It's integrated inside an insert function, and taking this to the next level for your own business rules is really easy. Add-in express does it all for you. You can just worry about your code and your business rules.